Hey guys, welcome back to the Gamer's Vault. I'm your host, James. And today, before I get started on my project, I wanted to clarify a couple of things that I'm going to be a bigger man and say that I was wrong on. You are correct. The Raspberry Pi doesn't put out 4K. I should have said that in the last video. I was mistaken, and I want to apologize profusely. That's the first thing. The second thing is, goes out to Retro Sigma. I'm not even going to go to a whole you know, the whole thing. You guys saw my last video. You get how I feel about the damn project. I want to say I'm sorry to Yododo, whatever they call themselves. You are correct. The Retro Sigma engine doesn't use a Raspberry Pi. So I'm sorry. But you are using an Orange Pi Lite. Hmm. So as I go into the internets, and I look up Orange Pi Lite, and the reason why I know you're using this is because, hmm, I'm gonna put a picture up either in this video or I'll send a link to the below, and I want you guys to compare. I'm not even gonna tell you what I saw. I want you guys to see it, because some people on, on the channel who have their opinion, and I respect your opinions, on what I say and what I don't say and all that stuff. I want you to just take a look at it for yourselves and to judge it for yourself. The next thing I want to see is, um, I saw some YouTube channels about the Retro Sigma and they got some responses and stuff like that and I wanted to make sure that maybe I'm not the only one that feels this way, that feels that this is another Coleco Chameleon in the flesh. So. Another YouTuber, I, I didn't get his name and I wanted to apologize, I will link it again on my description below so that way you guys can check out his channel. Another YouTuber stated he wanted to get a, uh, like a response from the company to find out what they're making, really making. Not only is that he got a response that it turned out to be an orange pie, they didn't respond to it, that's how he figured it out as well. He said, I assure you that the emulators that we're going to be putting into this system Will not inter will not have a copyright. All right, guys. Let me explain how this works. I'm gonna even show it to you. This is a Game Boy. It's made by freaking Nintendo. Nintendo makes it, right? So they make you know they have different titles and different games that go with my Nintendo, and that's how I'm able to play my Game Boy. You're making an emulation station. That's what it really is, it's an emulation station. Uh, that's another thing I found out about the emulation station at RetroPie. But it looks similar, so please forgive me. And as you guys see the link that I posted in my last post, the last video, excuse me, um, you'll see that it's there and it looks a little similar so you can get why it looked a little confusing. You're using an emulator to play these games. That's what you're doing. So. Is it going to interfere with the copyright? Let me explain how copyright works. I own these titles, right? They belong to me. If I decided to download the ROM to play in this emulator, would I get in trouble? It's a gray area because technically you're downloading it online for free, whereas the company can sell you the, the ROM. But, but, but that's beside the point. I own the cartridge, right? So I, my rights can do it, right? What you're doing is, is you're putting a 32, a 16, an 8 gig, whatever you want to do to this system, and you're selling it. And does it violate copyright? It, you sure goddamn well it does. Because people, some people like myself, who are retro collectors, will get the Retro Sigma, I hate to say it, but some people are just, I'm going to be honest with you, and please don't take this offensively to anyone out there, are lazy, they don't want to build it themselves. The next video, the next part of this video, I'm going to show you the hardware and how I make my personal uh, retro, en retro Engine Sigma. Nah, I want to make sure you how I make my Retro Engine and show you how that works. But, I collect these games. I can play them if I want to. Do I want to? Not really. Some of these games are really rare. So that's why you use an emulator to play these games. That's how it works. But some people out there are not going to do that. What they're going to do is download a crap load of emulators, or ROM, excuse me, and play it on the system. Because that's what your system is pushing to say. 
Come on, guys. This is not... This is simple mathematics here. Let's figure this out. Anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole video with this. On the next part of our video, I'm going to show you how I make my own Nintendo... Or Nintendo, I can't say Nintendo Mini, but a Nintendo case that I'm going to have Cody on it. And, um, yeah, we're going to go with that. And I'm going to show you guys part one. And it's going to go through all the hardware and how I do the hardware. And part two is how the video, the, the excuse me, the software is going to be installed and how it looks. How it's going to look on the Retro Engine Sigma. By the way, just a side note, if you're doing an Indiegogo campaign, and I'm probably giving you guys ideas out there, if you're doing an Indiegogo campaign and you were saying, Retro Cases for Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi, I would back that because you're building cases. You're not really doing anything else but making cases. A lot of people can't don't have 3D printers. So those people that can make it, Etsy, Etsy.com, they do the retro cases. I don't mind paying for it because I don't have a 3D printer. Why not? Same thing for you guys. I want you to keep in mind as you look at my videos and how you make the my you know, retro your own retro gaming system, like the mini NES. I want you to keep in mind, the case that I use is for me, but it may not be for what you want. This is the best part about a 3D printer and those people who sell 3D cases. I want you to always keep that in mind. Anyway guys, let's get to the video. Hey guys, uh, thanks for that brief interlude. So as you already probably could see, this is the inside of a Nintendo case. So. A lot of these things here, I'm not gonna need. So, with that being said, I'm gonna use a Dremel. It's a Dremel drill, very small, fine drill. And I'm gonna be able to drill out these holes all around here. I'm gonna cut them all out so I can make this smooth. The only stands that you will need out of this whole case, I'm gonna show you a little bit closer, here we go. The only stands you're gonna need are the ones like this. This one, this one, this one, and then, of course, the other corresponding sides. Everything else, except for the uh, little occasion stuff here, um, you're not going to need. Sorry. You're not going to need. And the reason why is because that was for the motherboard that was in there. We're not going to use it. I'm also going to drill out the, the port that was here that's been closed off by Nintendo for, like, the birth of the system. Sorry, I'm going to show you the port. For the birth of the system because um, they were going to use it. They never did. I'm not going to get into the semantics of why they didn't do it or what happened there, but uh, in a little bit of video, I'll do a little brief history on the NES and the Famicom, the family computer that, that is in Japan, and you could, I could tell you the differences. But for now, I'm going to go ahead. Hey guys, so now you can see that the Dremel is done. Um, it doesn't have to be giantly perfect, but you got the stems down, which is what you want. I may put a hard drive in here. That's the reason why I want areas cleaned up. I did wash it out to get rid of all the little dust and stuff. You're probably saying to yourself right now, what the fuck is this black thing here? This, folks, is the extension to the HDMI cable. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and glue it to the back. So that way she stays in. I'm using hot glue. Hot glue. So I'm waiting for it to heat up. And I have extension cables for the um, RJ45, which is the network cable. And I've got it for the power cable. So, as you can see, that was a lot. Now, I'm going to show you the sides of the cases so you can see what I'm going to be doing. The RJ45 is going to go here, where it says audio video. Because I don't really need that. In the back here, it's going to stay the RF adapter. It's going to still have that. And the channel 3, 4, and the RF switch is going to be the HDMI. So, when I'm done, you're going to see that these are all glued in. Then the next step I'm going to be doing is mounting my Raspberry Pi, and this is where I want to mount it at. And the reason why I wanted this empty and open is because Raspberry Pis get hot, and I, and I have heat sinks for it, but to be honest with you, what's more air? And the heat rises up. So if I get air through here, she comes up. Now you're probably saying, is he going to put a fan? Uh, maybe, not, maybe, maybe not. I'm going to do like Nintendo did. I'm going to take their lead and future-proof this. If I want to put a fan here, I will do it later on in, in a future update or video. So you guys will see that in a future update as I modify or tend to add stuff to my Raspberry Pi uh, NES 
um, computer. So, um, let me go ahead and start getting these glued on here, and we'll go on. Hey guys, all right, so while we let that case dry, we're gonna do the soldering portion of the situation here. So as you can see, I've got a soldering iron. It's a battery operated one from Radio Shack. Now, I recommend only this because it is a small project. We're not doing something huge, so this will work. And if you turn it on and you hold the button here for seven seconds, guess what? That tip is gonna be hotter than heck, which is what we need for our resin core, right? So, as you already know, this is the switch for the Nintendo. Now, I'm gonna use the same switch, and the way we're gonna do it, at least start us off, is we're gonna tin these wires here. We're gonna tin them with, uh, with the solder, because when you use solder, you don't bring it to the circuit board, especially this one. I'm gonna show you what the circuit board we're gonna be using first. Um, you wanna tin them first, so that way when you put them in, Guess what? They go in perfectly, and you don't have to worry about too much solder or excess solder. Okay, so we got that. Then we have this. This is gonna go on our Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna show you a little bit closer here. This is a Milesbury circuit from Milesbury Circuits. You can Google it online, and I'm, and they have different models with switches and no switches. This one's with a no switch because we're gonna be using the Nintendo. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder this in, and then we're gonna, the next time you're gonna see this is on the actual Raspberry Pi itself inside the case as well as the um, Nintendo guys so there you go at least you guys have an idea on how this is gonna be done it's pretty easy just take your time don't burn yourself and if you're underage make sure you get your parents to help you or whatever don't do this by yourselves because I don't want you to curse me out on my channel talking about you got burned anyway guys I'll be back hey guys thank you for your patience as you see, I actually, like I said before, I made sure that all the standoffs are clean. And I got a couple things I want to explain. Since it's Christmas, a lot of the parts did not arrive. The USB ports that I'm going to put here did not arrive. The HDMI cable that was connected here, what happened to it was that it was the wrong HDMI cable. So I ordered a new one. Didn't arrive. Since it's the holidays where I live, it's almost Christmas, a week before Christmas. Uh, parts are still gonna be here, but I didn't want you guys to think that I just flaked on the project. So I've been working on it. This is the Mosberry circuit. This circuit here, uh, you connect it into the Raspberry Pi, and then you connect the extension cable into here, which gives it the power and also gives me the control. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. This is the Raspberry Pi. It is mounted by you know two screws here, just mounted in there. Make sure it doesn't move. Now. These here are the connections for the LED for the front of the Nintendo. It's going to light up as always. And then that's the connections for the controls to the Mosberry circuit. So there you go. So just to show you that it does work and it does boot, I'm going to go ahead and hit the power button. So you guys can see it. The LED glows really red. I'm sorry about the cam camera glare. And as you can see here, the Raspberry Pi is definitely uh, showing signal. Green and red means that it's reading the uh, SD card that's located on the side here, which is right over here. Sorry for the blurry, the camera's gonna be a jerk about it. Let's go ahead and pull that back out again. Uh, there we go. So the, the, the 64 gig is right over here. That's the 64 gig. And of course, there you go. So check this out. So I un I'm gonna un take the power button out. It's still gonna continue. Then if I hit the reset button, it turns off the Masbury circuit. Now, the reason why it does that is because right now I haven't programmed it, and I'm going to show you that in the software segment of the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to show you how everything is programmed so that way this and this work together with the um, total board so you, you guys can see it. So, right now, as you can always see, I'm almost done. I'm not completely finished. So, I'm going to show you guys this, the software portion of it. And then later on, I'll show you it all together because unfortunately, parts I have to wait and Christmas and all that stuff. So it's going to take another week or so before I can get the software segment out. It's Christmas week for me and I have to get everything ready. So that's the reason why. So guys, thank you once again for paying attention or just viewing my channel. If you do like it, then please subscribe or hit that thumbs up button on the video. See if you like it. If you have any comments, questions or concerns, go ahead and um, lay them down below. Those of you guys that um, that have any opinions on what I've done or what I should have done or have any questions, put them down there as well. By the way, 
this segment portion of the of the uh, case, I'm gonna eventually later on, not in this videos or the next couple of videos, I'm gonna put a hard drive in there so I can install more games and and uh, it'll be nice. Either way, guys, thank you once again, and uh, see you next time.